Cameron Yarborough is in the house today. I am so excited to talk to you, Cameron, because you are a recent graduate from Pepperdine University, and you immediately got a job upon graduation, which is just a ma ma massive accomplishment. And so uh, we would love to hear what your journey was in college, what you studied, and how you decided to go to where you are today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Nana. Um, so starting off, um, I guess I'll talk about how I got my job and how I uh, found a job so quickly after graduation. So um, during my junior year, I was kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I think I was uh, really open to whatever it may have been. But um, I was talking to whoever it was, um, like a friend of a friend would recommend me to, oh, I know somebody who works in this field. I know somebody who works in this field. So I was just talking to a lot of people. And I was talking to one person. I was like, yeah, I want to get some uh, hands-on experience this summer to figure out what I want to do, you know, to gauge a different at least one field before I graduate and start applying to jobs so someone connected me to somebody who whose company was um hiring interns so I applied that internship and I got the internship at Lockton Insurance Brokerage and truthfully like insurance was never something that I had um considered working in before but I like looking into that once I did my research into the company and things of that and talking to people who work there I was really excited to serve my internship so Unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, my internship got canceled or first it got shifted to remote. And I was like, oh, well, that's convenient, you know, but ultimately they ended up canceling the entire internship program. So I never got the chance to do that. But I graduated um, one semester later. And when they canceled the internship, they told me, keep in touch post-graduation. Um, we'd love to keep in contact and all that. So I kept in contact and um, <laughs> they hired me. So I started in January of 2021, and now it's June of 2021, so I've been doing that for six months now. Now, did you have an emphasis on just business administration, or did you study insurance, or what was your the principal courses you took? My major was economics, and then I had a minor in Spanish or Hispanic studies, quote-unquote, same thing. But um, yeah, I honestly, I didn't really take any courses insurance-related. It was just insurance is kind of like a there's people in my company who majored in English or, you know, math. It's not necessarily like a very rigid, like you need a degree in this to do so. I see. And so um, what's your day to day like? Do you go to the, do you go to the office first of all, or is that I, up now? So I just started going to the office last, last week was my first time going to the office. I I'm on a schedule right now where I go twice a week. So I go every Monday and Wednesday. Um, it's been really good so far going to the office. At least I mean, the drive isn't too bad. Um, relative to what you would imagine driving to downtown Los Angeles would be like. But um, the drive isn't too bad. It's nice to put some faces to these names that I've been emailing for so long. Um, yeah, and get to know them outside of talking about insurance because it's good to know who somebody is, you know? And I think that's a little motivating. And what is your title? Um, my title now is Associate Account Manager. I see. And so tell us what that is. So as an Associate Account Manager, um, well, I, I think I should explain what the company does a little first. So then okay. what I do will make more sense. But um, so as an insurance brokerage, we're pretty much like the middleman between like any company you could imagine, like um, anything, I don't know, Jamba Juice or McDonald's or Foot Locker, just any company you could imagine and um, the insurance companies. And the sector of insurance I work in is the management liability um, sector. So it's pretty much insurance that protects um that protects directors and officers or the higher ups of, of a company from um, if they don't follow their uh, fiduciary liability. So if they do something that's bad for the company or something damaging, then it protects them. Or um, there's also like employment um, practices liability, which pretty much protects people from um, like sexual harassment claims or discrimination or wrongful termination and things of that nature. So that's what my department and my company does. And then me, myself, so I handle like the day-to-day -day operations with the clients and, and with the carriers. So I um, go to the clients trying to get the um, important like financials and documents like that. We go to the underwriters, the insurance companies and talk to them about the terms that they're offering and try to, you know, get the limits and the retentions and, or a retention might be better referred to as a deductible. I think that's what it's the more common term, but um yeah, and trying to make sure that we get the best terms that we can for our clients and uh, make proposals to send to the clients. Um, honestly, it's, it's, it's very fluid. Like, it's hard for me to just say I do a few things because, honestly, it's different day, from day to day. Are you doing a lot of writing? 
Um, I write emails, but not like nothing, nothing like I'm not writing essays or anything like that. I wouldn't say it's a lot of writing. It's a lot of talking and uh, communication, but I wouldn't say writing in the sense that, you know, I don't have to, not like in an English class or something, you know? And so what are, what were some of your work experiences prior to this job? So I, I'd say that this is, was my first like, um, quote unquote, prof- or no, 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 I'm lying. It was not my quote unquote first professional. So I'd say my first quote unquote professional job was like I interned with the Department of Sanitation when I was like a sophomore in high school, I believe. So that was my first time ever really being in an office. And I don't think that I did the best at that job or I even really learned a lot from the actual work of that job besides like the culture of professionalism and showing up to an office every day, which I do think um, was helpful learning that at 15, I think I was at the time. And then when I was later in high school, I interned with an assembly member. And I think with the assembly member, it's kind of the same way where I think I did learn a lot about politics at the time, but even more useful is just the day-to-day culture of being in an office and um, carrying yourself in a professional manner. And yeah, and then when I was in college, I didn't really have any jobs that were necessarily relevant to what I do now. But um, I think I did other things that I was able to take skills from. For example, um, Nana, you know this, but I had like the little summer camp, the summer uh, during during the pandemic where I um, took care of four 11 year old boys and we did different various activities. And I think that, that while that wasn't necessarily professional or maybe that's not something you would take as a traditional job, I think that the punctuality and the responsibility that was required is still something that helps today because, I mean, even then I was in, interacting with the parents who are who were professionals in their own field, you know, and I had to uphold some sort of standard that they um, would expect of me. So I had to, I think that same mentality that I have with communicating to the parents transfers over to my job when I'm talking to my supervisors or my coworkers or whoever it may be. Seriously, <laughs> I remember when you did that and you kind of came up with that, right? Because wasn't the pandemic raging and you needed a summer job or how did that yeah, exactly so, go? Yeah, so um, I was, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But um, the, so I was working with one of the kids before, but then the COVID-19 pandemic started and his summer camp got shut down. So all him and his friends didn't know what they were going to do. And at the same time, my um, my internship got canceled. So I was going to have a free summer and they didn't know who was going to watch their kids. So I felt like I had been watching at least one of the kids. And I had some sort of familiarity with all the kids um, for the past six or seven months, maybe. So I feel like um, so I saw two things that uh, needed to be filled and I offered my services and it worked out great for me or I mean, not just for me, but I think it worked out great for everybody involved. They got to have the kids off the hands. I, the kids had a lot of fun and I got to um, not just be sitting around twiddling my thumbs all summer. Absolutely. When you, okay, so after you, you know, you denied the internship and then it was, you graduated and then you went back to them. Did they want to review your resume at that time or did they already know it? Um, no, they definitely reviewed it. Like I, I had to go through the, I think I had to go through like two or three interviews still. It wasn't like, I just, oh, they're like, oh, you got the internship. So we'll hire you. No, I still had to go through the internship process and, uh, do something that like a normal new hire would have to do. Um, yeah, but I thought the interviews went really well. And did you put that summer camp job on your resume? Yeah, I definitely did. Did they ask you about that? <laughs> they did. Um, The interviews were about six months ago, so it's a little hard for me to remember what I said exactly, but I'm pretty sure it was something along the lines of what I told you about how maybe it's not your job. Oh, I know what I really talked about it. I said about it. I talked about how I think that helped me, helped display my entrepreneurial spirit, you know, because specifically in my industry, I think that it's very, um, I was just talking to my coworker about this yesterday, but it's a very, um, just get your stuff done and nobody really cares, you know? It's no, nobody's ever really hovering over my shoulder to make sure I'm doing this, this, and this. I'm just assigned tasks or I know what I have to do. And as long as I get it done, nobody's, you know, nobody's um, tripping all over me. So I think in the same vein, when I was doing that summer camp, it was me taking the initiative and it was me being responsible for the kids and our activities and our food and all those things. So I tried to display or not, maybe not display, but talk about how those same things there were, um, could apply to my job, even right. though they're- That is so they're, huge to share with this group because so often people, especially if they're fairly new going into a new job, 
they often don't think about the fact that the things that they do on their own can often correlate to have value for an interview. So I'm so happy that you, you shared that with us. Did you get any difficult yeah. uh, interview questions when you were interviewing? Um, they were all pretty typical interview questions. I think some of the, like, I think, hmm, I, I, I can't really think of it. I didn't, I, the one that's always hard for me that I know I didn't get for sure was, um, cause I, I would have remembered if I did was, um, what's your greatest weakness or any, or something like that. I never got that question. Um, I think they ask you why you want to work for this company. Yeah, they did. But I mean, I think personally that shouldn't be too hard of a question. I think that should, okay. In my opinion, my humble opinion, I think that question, that sort of question should be a layup, you know, like you should take the time researching the company and figure out what it is about them that maybe even if there isn't anything that super draws you towards them, I feel like if you go through Google and read about the company and read about their mission statement and why they do what they do and how they do what they do, it should be easy to take away at least something that makes you um, think that you would want to work there. Um, I think the, I think the one thing that I do think was a little troubling for me in the interview process um, was Actually, okay, so I guess I'll have to give a little background to this, is I actually interviewed for another job. So I applied for a job at a mortgage lending for firm, which I was offered, but in that interview, they asked me, tell me about a time when you worked on a team and had to resolve a conflict. And to me, those sort of questions are always difficult, like the tell me about a time um, questions, because one, it's like so on demand and it's like, oh, I have to dig through all my memories ever and think about one time you know so that's always a little difficult for me but yeah i remember i struggled with that one and i told some story about a group project in college but even then i felt like it wasn't the um strongest answer and do you think that going to pepperdine played a role in you getting this job um that's hard for me to answer honestly i would like to think but <laughs> i i know I don't know. I've, <laughs> I don't know. I'm truly trying to think there's been some, like there was a joke one of my coworkers made when we were talking about like what colleges we went to and somebody was like, Oh, Cameron's one of the smart guys. He went to Pepperdine. But so maybe there was that sort of uh, stigma, I guess, which I don't know. I don't know if I agree with, but yeah, I, I don't know. I can't tell you if going to Pepperdine helped me <laughs> truthfully. And so what did you, when you were talking about networking, how did you figure out who to network and how'd you find those people? So, I mean, there's a lot of people, I think specifically during my last year and a half at Pep, yeah, year and a half at Pepperdine, I was able to network a lot through a lot of different avenues. Some of it was through um, like the career center. Oh, I remember what I wanted to say earlier. So the Pepperdine career center, they had this program where it was like in a, a career mentoring program. And that was something that was very helpful for me because one, my career mentor said, Hey, if you need a job, I could get you a job at this company, you know? So I didn't take a job at that company, but it was very helpful to have him in my corner. And not just did he offer me a job, but when I was weighing which job I wanted to take between the, the one I'm at now and the one that I got offered, I called him and talked to him on the phone for an hour. He was um, someone who was able to provide advice for me because he had been working in the industry for 30, 40 years, you know? So that was something that was very useful to me. Um, so that was a great connection that um, who I still keep in contact with to, to, to this day. Um, other networking, just friends of friends, you know, um, through another, some of, when I was doing the summer camp, some of the uh, parents, you know, there uh, through their jobs asked me if I ever wanted to talk to them about anything professionally. And obviously I took them up on that offer, asking them about what they do and, uh, you know, just trying to gauge the market per se. So yeah, there was a, I don't know. I, there was no one way that I felt like I networked, but there was a, a lot of different ones, you know? I think another thing that was helpful is um, just talking to my people or, uh, people around me, you know? Because I didn't do any internships my in between my freshman and sophomore year or between my sophomore and junior year. But a lot of my other uh, peers or co I shouldn't say colleagues, but my peers did. And I think just talking to them and asking them how they were able to do what they did and uh, what they would recommend, um, whether it was good or bad, I think aggregating all that advice was good for me in the long run. I mean, that's such great advice because, I mean, sometimes people are introverts 
and they're they don't have the will to want to reach out to people just because they are so introverted so i think that's a real asset that you've got is that you're willing to talk to people and you're not afraid of it hmm. well cool um so is there any other advice that you have for somebody who's currently in college and is there something that they should be doing that maybe they aren't thinking of that you could advise um i mean i i think the most helpful thing to me that helped me was just talk to everybody who you can anybody who you could think of who even if they don't have a job that you may not necessarily desire not only may they know somebody who might but maybe that job that you don't think you'd want is the job that you think you want you know so i think just talking to people and uh trying to figure out how they did what they did how they got where they are and when i say talk to people i mean literally anybody like i've talked to my again other college students of mine who i went to school with who i thought the conversations with them were very helpful um yeah, I think just being out there, being active. I think another great tool is uh, LinkedIn and being, because I think it's easy to lose sight of the fact that even if someone's like super uber successful in their field or they, um, you know, it seems like they made it, it seems like they're a celebrity and whatever it is that they do, they're still just a person, you know? And most people want to help other people. So if it is that you want to, you see somebody on LinkedIn and you want to message them and you want to just ask them like, how did they get where they got, you know? I think um, it never hurts because what's the worst thing they're going to do is say no. So I think just being uh, cognizant and being very active of trying to get out and make yourself well known, because I think those sorts of connections and conversations are the things that really help you in the long run more than anything, almost more than anything else. I mean, it's really true. And what I found over the years is that people want to help other people. And especially if they're in college, I've always said to college students, this is your time to ask anybody anything because you're not a threat. You're just, they're going to want to most likely want to help you. And so, yeah, that's just great advice. And I'm so happy to hear you say that. Yeah, I'll exactly. And you, you can, I couldn't have said it better myself about how when you're in college, it's the perfect time to take opportunity to that because you're still seen as like a, I mean, you I don't want to say that you're like a project, you're like a piece of wet clay, you know? So um, that, I feel like that's how other people would view it. So they'd be a lot more uh, willing to help you than someone who's five years into their career and trying to switch fields or something. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if Cameron, if somebody does want to ask you a couple of questions, can they reach out to you through LinkedIn or is there any way they can reach you? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, truthfully, LinkedIn probably isn't the best way. Um, okay. I could give out my email or my number if that's helpful at all. But, oh, it's up to you. Uh, I'll, I'll put it in the description if you're willing. If you yeah, want you can to put, put, my, it out there. put my email in the, in the uh, description. I have no problem with that. Yeah. Will you just tell us what it is, please? Yeah. Cam, C-A-M-V, as in violin, Y, as in, um, I don't know, Hello? Y, as in Yarbrough, and then seven, the number seven at gmail.com. Okay, cool. Well, that's really nice of you. You never know. Some a college student might reach out to you and say, yeah, I mean, can I have some advice? And now you're the guy that they're reaching out to. Yeah, I mean, I, I really have no problem. I always have time to talk. So that always loves you. What'd you say now? You're such a nice guy. Thank I you. worked a little bit with Cameron. What was it last summer? Was it? Summer, it was yeah. well back. And uh, yeah, oh, you're just yeah. such a great guy. Anyway, Thank you, Cameron, for sharing your wisdom with us. And I just wish you every success in the world. Thank you, Nana. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye.